right. Good day, everyone, and thank you for joining us here at Ministries of Hope Christian Church, uh, Sunday morning Bible study. Uh, we thank you and don't take for granted your, that you're here with us. We just ask that you share this word so that uh, the Lord's word can keep ringing out there. Amen. 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 With that, uh, we're going to go to God, ask him to bless this Bible study this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you for waking us up, Lord. Lord, we thank you for waking us up in our right mind, Lord. Lord, as we come to you to view your message and di dive deeper into your word, Lord, we just act as you open our eyes so that we can see your message, open our ears so we can hear your message, and most, most importantly, open our hearts so we can receive your message, Lord. Yes. Lord, we invite your presence in, Lord, and we ask you to guide us to wherever you want us to go in this Bible study this morning. In Jesus' name, we pray and believe. Amen. 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 With that, over to you, Reverend Thompson. Thank you, Minister Hutchings. Um, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it as we go into his word. Um, we're in 2 Kings, picking up at chapter 4, verse 22. I won't do a recap of what we went through last time we were before you. You can check that out on our Wednesday night studies, which are housed on YouTube, as well as our Sunday morning studies. Um, all of that is there if you need a recap to dive in. Um, I will ask our pastor, is there anything you would like to add before we get started? Amen. Amen. Well, let's pick up where we left off. Um, and that is the search for Elisha. And that's verse 22. As always, we're reading out of King James Version, unless we otherwise. Amen, amen. Verse 22. And it's titled, The Search for Elisha. Verse 22 reads, And she called unto her husband and said, Send me, I pray thee, one of the young men and one of the asses, that I may run to the man of God and come again. And he said, Wherefore wilt thou go to him today? It is neither new moon nor Sabbath. And she said, It shall be well. 24. Then she sat her an ass and said to her servant, Drive and go forward. Slack not thy riding for me, except I bid thee. So she went and came unto the man of God to Mount Carmel. And it came to pass when the man of God saw her afar off, he said to Gehazi, his servant, Behold, yonder is that um, Shunammite. Run now, I pray thee, to meet her, and say unto her, It is well with thee, it is well with thy husband, it is well with the child. And she answered, It is well. Verse 27, And when she came to the man of God to the hill, she caught him by the feet. But Gehazi came near to thrust her away. And the man of God said, Let her alone, for her soul is vexed within her. And the Lord hath hid it from me, and hath not told me. Then she said, Did I desire a son of my Lord? Did I not say, Do not deceive me? Then he said to Gehazi, Gird up thy loins, and take my staff in thine hand, and go thy way. If thou meet any man, salute him not. And if any salute thee, answer him not again. And lay my staff upon the face of the child. Amen. Amen. I'll read the commentary from as here for 18 through 26, where it says, This was another opportunity to show that God could miraculously bless. The Old Testament promise of earthly blessings for keeping the law was it a general promise not an absolute promise to every faithful person. There were many people who had faith but were not rewarded with freedom of, and prosperity, as in the case of Naaman's Jewish servant girl in 5.2. Nevertheless, any blessing is an example of God's care for his faithful ones. The common perception for the um, Shunammite woman to lose her son could send a negative message about God suspensing the blessing. And for 27 states, Elisha modeled both sensitivity and a recognition of his own limitations. 
His words, Lord, have hid it from me, showed limitation to the knowledge and power God granted him. The 28 says her aesthetic hopes are suddenly dashed in her spiritual lower now than they had been before she was blessed with the son. Some grief is too painful to share with just anyone. Concealing her thoughts from her husband and from Gehazi, the woman wanted to deal with Elisha, the source of her blessing. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. She had enough faith in her to go to the man of God. I don't see where she cried out to the Lord herself. Right. Mm -hmm. She did go to the man of God. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I think what is said, she was grieving. Sometimes we're going through a lot of stuff, and that's the reason why we reach out to others that we think it has a better connection than we have. And that's all right. But sometimes we have to um, have that faith that God will hear us the same way he's hearing other people. Yeah. Mm. Mm. What did you read to twenty one? I I sort of find it um you know interesting with the commentary how you know it says the woman wanted to deal with Elijah, the source of her blessing. So that shows you that, you know. You know, she wanted to go to the source to find out, you know, why this is happening. Even mm -hmm. though, like you're saying, she didn't go directly to the Lord, but, you know, she went to one of God's representatives to find out what was going on. And, you know, she knows she needed help. So at least she went to God's, you know, one of God's representatives it's to certainly. find out what's happening, what's going on, and why this is happening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She didn't even confide in her husband. She went on. You know, mm -hmm. he's like, "Why? What you going for? Is there a new moon? It ain't even. It's not the time for us to appear there just yet. Why are you trying mm -hmm. to go down to the to the to the church house right now? You know." And she's like, "Goodbye. I'm on mm -hmm. this donkey and I'm out." And mm -hmm. then she gets there, you know, and it kind of goes back to what um, <clears throat> Brother um, Minister Hutchings was saying the last study, where she says, and and. Mitchell told me afterwards where he, she says, then she said, did I, in 28, I desire a son of my Lord. Did I not say, do not deceive him, you know? And so that don't lie to me situation. Mm -hmm. So looking at that, where she's asking him, because you've given me this gift and now it's gone. Who was that? Oh, I can't think of the name. Uh, Elijah, that's who's coming to mind. Elijah, after she had uh, did what God told them to do, which was get, break him the bread and the cakes, and they've eaten, and the time had passed. Now her son dies. And it's like, you came in my house, and you did all this, and just for my son to die, like, what is this? You know, it's that same situation kind of playing here where she's asking him. And it's interesting how we will get stuff from God, just taking it out of here into real life. We'll get things from God because I know I've done it before and then you don't really want it, but then he gives it to you and you get used to it. And then if he were to take it away and then it's like, mm -hmm. well, wait a minute, Lord, like what happened? <laughs> what happened? Like I wasn't even looking for this, but now I got it. I'm used to it. Right. And now you want to take it on, you know, that might be a hard, a hard pill to swallow sometimes, mm. you know, like it's time for it to go, you know, because who knows whether it was getting in the way of him or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, that's why we got to be careful with our prayers because I'm praying all the time, Lord, if it's something that's going to remove me from you, I don't want it. So when mm -hmm. he take it away, I can't be crying, but sometimes mm -hmm. you be like, man, I like the comfort, you know, mm -hmm. but then you like, uh, uh, it's time to get uncomfortable. Nope. You too comfortable, you know? Right. And so I just, I, I'm wondering why I, I get why she's running to him to inquire because sometimes, you know, who else can you go talk to? You can't talk to people sometimes, even Hannah, 
you know, went down to pray, you mm -hmm. know, in order to figure out what was going on when she couldn't conceive with Samuel and she had Penina over there bothering her and everything else. And your husband just didn't, he didn't understand, like, ain't I enough? And right. sometimes the only person you can run to is the Lord. And sometimes mm -hmm. God should be the only person you run to with some stuff because I like how that commentary put it because sometimes you can't trust people with everything, right. you know? And you can trust God with all things. So mm -hmm. running to him in these times helps. I wonder if that's a question for us today. Like if when you're going through stuff, who's the first person you call? You know, do you call the Lord first? Peter five, first Peter 5, 7 says what? Cast what? All of our all cares. All your cares upon him. Mm -hmm. Not some of them. Yeah. Cast all your cares. <clears throat> so what we should do she went to the man of God, but we, we don't have to do that nowadays. Yeah. Whatever's going on in our life, good, bad, ugly, or indifferent, mm -hmm. we can take it to him because he backs that up. He says, I care about you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I pulled up that Ephesians um, 20. Ephesians 20. Ephesians uh, 3 20. <clears throat> now to him who is able to do his seat in the abundantly above all that we can ask of thee, according to the power that worketh in us. That power, <clears throat> the power in what we believe has to work in us and through us in order for us to receive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because if we don't believe, we can't receive. As mm -hmm. I tell you, the Bible talks of lip service more than one or two places. Mm -hmm. yeah. He said, people come to me with their lips, like um, they are uh, holy, sanctified, and believe. But their heart is far from me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And let not a man think that he'd get anything from God. Mm -hmm. Double minded man is unstable in all his ways. All his ways. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. Yeah. And that that shows for our world today. We just do not believe. We don't. And we see where Jehaze was going to try to block, I would say kind of block our blessings. Yeah. <laughs> don't do that. Yeah. And uh, what did they try to keep the woman away from Jesus? Yeah. To him, to kiss your blood, leave her alone. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have to press our way. Mm -hmm. That's why I keep telling everybody: this journey is not easy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have to press our way. Sometimes we want to walk away. Now let's tell the truth and shame the devil, because mm -hmm. you would think. Since we are, say, serving the Lord, we could be walking on a bed of roses. Not yeah. true. Uh -uh. The devil is going to come after us before he goes after his sinners. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We want to take a stand. So we yeah. won't be on here telling anybody about the Lord. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, I know there's, uh, you know, I can think of several things that you know if it happened in my life i'd be knocking on your door pastor yeah all right it, you, you know what i mean so mm -hmm. you know god puts people in our life spiritual leaders in our life but sometimes you know what we're going through is at that moment mm -hmm. you know it's just i can see where people just can't even talk you know mm -hmm. sometimes that you right. know go through That's my right. mind if it happens mm -hmm. you know and if i'm just fortunate you know, to have a spiritual leader like you that I know that I can come to no matter what time it is or when Amen. I need it, you're going to be there for Amen. me. So, you know, the Lord puts people there to, you know, for us to lean on, you know, mm -hmm. until we get back on our feet and know what, mm -hmm. you know, how we can pray. You know, we know how to pray, but some things yeah. that could happen to you in your life, you know, it's always good that you have a spiritual leader that you could go to. And you know, help guide you during those times. Yeah. And sometimes we can't pray. Mm -hmm. right. Sometimes those exactly. troubles hit us so hard you can't pray. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. why he said sometimes the only thing we can do is just moan and groan. That's right. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. he hears that. Mm -hmm. Now it's a people. I think there's a lot of things that turn people away from the church because we make it. Um, not we. A lot of people make it seem easy. Yeah. 
Once that you part. turn to the Lord, once you go to church and that's it, you know, mm -hmm. that's when it stops. That's right. Yeah. Because you're going to have to lay all that other stuff down. Mm. And those streets sometimes, well, it's true, people out there treat you better than the ones inside of uh, the house of prayer. Amen. Mm -hmm. Is that a mouthful? Mm -hmm. Did we read the commentaries already? Yes. We did? Okay. <clears throat> if you're just joining us, we're at 2 Kings chapter 4, picking up at verse 30. Mm -hmm. Elisha returns with the woman, um, Minister Hutching. Amen. <clears throat> and the mother of the child said, As the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And he arose and followed her. Hmm. Let's just say one thing right here. We see, she said, as the Lord liveth. Now that's telling us she knew something about the Lord, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because she said, as mm -hmm. the Lord liveth. Mm -hmm. so she lit. said praises to God right then and there. Oh, yeah. Okay. This is the same words that Elisha said to Elijah when he was getting ready gone in that whirlwind he said as the lord liveth and as the soul liveth i will not leave amen okay uh-huh and he arose and followed her and jehaza passed on before them and laid the staff upon the face of the child but there was neither voice nor hearing Wherefore he went again to meet him and told him, saying, The child is not awake. And when Elijah, Elijah was come into the house, behold, the child was dead and laid upon his bed. He went in, therefore, and shut the door upon them twain and prayed unto the Lord. And he went up and lay upon the child and put his mouth upon his mouth and his eyes upon his eyes and his hands upon his hands. And he stretched himself upon the child, and the flesh of the child waxed warm. Then he returned and walked into the house, walked in the house to and fro, and went up and stretched himself upon him. And the child sneezed seven times, and the child opened his eyes. And he called Jehaza and said, Call the Shunammite. So he called her, and when she was come in unto him, he said, Take up thy son. Then she went in and fell at his feet and bowed herself to the ground and took up her son and went out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Some years back, I heard a preacher lay down a child trying to do what uh, Elisha did here. Mm -hmm. And that's what he started to do it today. Mm -mm. When he said many are called, mm -hmm. <laughs> he was chosen. Amen. 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 It's reminding me of um, Lazarus, you know, where he said, I'm, I'm, even though Jesus wept, um, shout out to Sunday school. Even though Jesus wept, um, he said, "I'm glad this happened, so you're able to see." Mm -hmm. You know, and the fact that she had this child, and then for him to die, and then this to happen, that had to grow her some more in the Lord. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And she didn't have faith, and if she hadn't believed, yeah, she definitely got some now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the commentary reads uh, for 29 through 31 says when sent to bring healing to the woman's son Jehaza was to be focused on the task Jehaza's failed to attempt to bring healing also revealed the human limitation of the man of God Elijah had seen had, had seen confident that sending Jehaza was sufficient to heal the woman's son 32, 35, when Elijah arrived, he carried out a more complicated procedure for healing the son. 
in that day and time even some sincere some, some sincere worshipers of the lord might have taken this healing act to be a result of magical power given by god in this way some may have mistakenly taken elijah to be a man gifted with rare powers such notions are contrary are contrary to biblical revelation we must understand that in the era of epic power encounters between men of god and representatives of darkness men such as elijah perform spectacular feats only because they serve as a channel as channel for god's miraculous power mm -hmm. there was no magic to it nor were the powers given to the men of god in such a way as to make the powers their own here elijah's success was dependent on his prayer unto the lord Amen. Depending on his prayer unto the Lord. Uh, okay. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, where it says there was no um, magical powers. Nowadays, we still see people believing in black magic. Mm -hmm. They will um, take herbs and um, let them, like you always talking about crystals, mm -hmm. whatever. They, they believe in that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But they don't believe in the maker that mm -hmm. created not some things but everything. Everything. Mm -hmm. The um commentary over here says Elijah's prayer and method of raising the dead boy shows God's personal care for hurting people. We must express genuine concern for others as we carry God's message to them. Only then will we faithfully represent our compassionate Father in heaven. Amen. Amen. Because he could have just missed her away. Mm -hmm. you know, like, why? You said everything's fine. Why are you so perplexed? But the fact that he took time with her. You know, mm -hmm. and a lot of people don't take time with people right. who are hurting because the way it shows up. You know, it can show up as anger. It can show mm -hmm. up as um depression it can show up in so many different ways and we're all so busy nobody wants to slow down mm -hmm. you know mm, that's that's a good example because in this world everyone's impatient with the poor they're impatient with those that have not and being truthful of the matter we're all one paycheck away from having not mm -hmm. and um <clears throat> no one wants to take time you know we see leaders who shake hands with people from other countries and then wipe them on shirts and they don't really care to deal with people who are hurting people who are suffering mm -hmm. you know we'll, we see that's kids go in other countries yeah that's here in this country as well yeah that's why mm -hmm. the kids we go home less country. in this country mm -hmm. we do mm -hmm the land of the free is not so free mm -hmm. and yeah there's every opportunity here but the sad part is is that those opportunities come few and far in between for some and mm -hmm. no one cares no one cares and so, sometimes to get a handout from the city or the government you need an address mm -hmm. yeah come on and if you're living on the street how can you have an address Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Our war hero is out in the street. Mm -hmm. You know? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. And oh. those who have been injured in the police department, I was working with quite a few up here when I was uh, dealing with the shelter. And it's a shame that our men have gone over there, got named and uh, mined or whatever. I think it's a little better now. Mm -hmm. But before they turned them out and put them in the street, there were so many of those guys sleeping down in the woods. Now, these are people who had been out there fighting for our country. Mm -hmm. And they should have been the ones that's getting everything handed to them. Mm -hmm. Okay? But we, if you're not, if you don't have, you look down on them. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Make your time. Mm-hmm. You know, I also was thinking about, you know, in this, even though the story or, you know, you know, the situation, I guess, you know, turned out where, you know, the child was given life again. But if you, you know, think about it, you know, it said back in verse, in the previous um, verses where it said um, he, had, he was grown in um, verse 18, the child was grown. So it wasn't like, you know, she received a blessing. And he was gone the next day. Right. As, as it happened, you know, to some before, you know, he had grown and, you know, you know, if he didn't make it, you know, she, you know, should have been, you know, thankful for the time that she had because he was grown as the word says. So we have to realize, you know, no matter how long we have our blessings, we got to be thankful for our blessings when we do have them or do receive Amen. them. Amen. You have anything else on those verses before we keep going here? All right. The poisonous pottage. Verse starting at verse 38, if you're just joining us, of Second Kings chapter 4. Brother Thomas. Mm-hmm. Verse 38. And Elisha came again to Gilgal, and there was a dearth in the land, and the sons of the prophets were sitting before him. And he said unto his servant, Set on the great pot, and seeth pottage for the sons of prophets. And one went out into the field to gather her herbs, and found a wild vine, and gathered thereof wild gourds his lap full, and came and shred them into the pot of pottage. For they knew them not. For so they poured out for the men to eat. And it came to pass as they were eating of the pottage that they cried out and said, O thou man of God, there is death in the pot. And they could not eat thereof. But he said, Then bring meal. And he cast it into the pot. And he said, Pour out for the people that they may eat. And there was no harm in the pot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So dirt is famine. Uh, I think so. Okay. Yes, in the land. Mm-hmm. Okay. We hear the commentary for the heifer thirty-eight and forty-one. Is for 38, that since the text had earlier placed Elisha and the prophets in the northern Gilgal near Bethel, this is likely the same northern Gilgal. Apparently, the prophets partly supported themselves by forge, forging and partly by gifts from the Israel, Israelites. This says for 41, the lesson here was that God's power could protect his people from careless dangers even in a serious famine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That answers the question right like there. Serious mm-hmm. famine. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. And even today, well, naturally in this country, as I tell you, I'm a TV, so I watch a lot of these people are working in the park. Mm-hmm. You have to know what, you, what you're eating when you go out there. You have to know mm-hmm. what Shall uh, leaves to touch with berries to touch. There's one, I don't know if you want to do that, but there's one bush called, we call it a salad. And while that uh, vine is, while the bush is small, you take the small leaves off and the tender leaves off and you can cook those. But as that bush gets taller, it gets red berries. Those berries mm-hmm. are mm-hmm. I'm talking about, yeah, it's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we have to know what we're doing. Mm-hmm. And um, a lot of the people in the country years ago used to use leaves, say when they uh, go to leave themselves in the woods, they'd use the leaves to store paper. <laughs> Not the poison ivy. My cousin came down from New Jersey and we were out there playing. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
said, but what's you going to use? I said, the leaf. Mm -mm, you know. It was <laughs> mm. <laughs> I don't think he's accepting that style of business. <laughs> 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 and there are certain trees out there, like a pine needle tree. You can take the needles off that tree and boil it, and that's good for headaches, colds, and things like that. Mm. So, like, they were out there, uh, and you see those wild boars. Yes, it looks like it's good food. Mm -hmm. But you have to know what you're eating and what you're doing. Mm -hmm. But uh, my hands off to uh, hands up to Eliza when he said, bring the meal, put it in the pot. And that took the poison away so they could eat. So we have to know what we're doing at all times. And I would say a lot of that comes through trusting the Lord. Mm -hmm. My cousin trusted me that day. <laughs> and lost. <laughs> and was led astray. We were kids. <laughs> That's why, um, like you say, Pastor, we got to pray over this food, but we just can't be sitting down just spreading the words out without praying. The yeah, difference right. between reciting something and praying. Say know. so. Say so. Because, so. you know, all these places we eat at, mm -hmm. you don't know what to get in your food. That's mm -hmm. right. That's right. Very. People uh, pay a lot of money to eat filth. Mm -hmm. A mm -hmm. lot of money. Mm -hmm. And don't realize that's what they're eating. Mm -hmm. you are, and we don't even know about this meat and stuff that we buy. We don't know what's in it. Yeah. That's yeah. why everything, I, I told you, I pray over my medicine like I pray over my food. Mm -hmm. Because I don't know what's in that stuff. It's poison as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Exactly. But we have to put everything, not some things, everything in God's hand. Mm -hmm. Everything. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have the 20 loaves, uh, minister 42. Amen. And there came a man from Balshalasha and brought the man of God bread of the first fruits, 20 loaves of barley, and full ears of corn in the husk thereof. And he said, Give unto the people that they may eat. And his servitor said, What? Shall I set this before a hundred men? He said again, Give the people that they may eat. For thus said the Lord, They shall eat and shall leave thereof. So he set it before them, and they did eat and left thereof according to the word of the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Yes, says the Lord, we want to the word of the Lord. Mm -hmm. There again, if God will, he will supply your every mm -hmm. need according to his riches and glory. Mm -hmm. So the uh, commentary for that reads for 42, another opportunity for a miraculous provision occurred when a supporter brought a gift of bread to the prophets. This gift could indicate that the giver had rejected the apostate priesthood of the north since he gave this gift of the faithful prophets of the Lord. The location of Balshala is uncertain. And then 43 to 44 reads, This miracle sounds remarkable, similar to the feeding of the 5,000 in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. Perhaps Jesus consciously imitated this episode as yet another indication that he was the fulfillment of the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Here the instructive value of the miraculous work includes elements such as questioning the sufficiency of the gift, making an insufficient gift sufficient, distributing the food, and having more than we needed. The global lesson is God's ability to provide. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he will provide. Yeah. He will provide. And he will make uh this that when we don't have enough, he will make it more than enough. 
Amen. Mm-hmm. 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 Y'all have anything else for those verses there? Well, over here it's saying basically the same thing. It says, through Elijah, the Lord miraculously fed these people who were hungry because of the famine. Many years later, Jesus would perform another miracle and feed more than 5,000 people. People would remember Elijah's miracle and see God at work in Jesus. We have Naaman seeks healing for his leprosy. Chapter five, picking up the first one. If you're just joining us, the second two. Uh, Brother Thomas, mm-hmm. I agree. Here, there, this has a sort of a summary of the chapter before I start reading chapter five. Mm-hmm. Where it says this chapter gives an example of God's miracle working influence reaching out to the world and impacting a pagan nation possibly at a time when that nation was a deadly enemy of Israel since this incident could have occurred during the time of Hebrew weakness and Syrian strength that occurred between Jehu's revolution and the resurrection or I'm sorry in the <laughs> resurgence of Hebrew power on a Jeho- Jehoash mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Amen. Go on to read um, chapter 5, verse 1. It says, Now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master in honorable, because by him the Lord had, had given deliverance into Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper. Amen. And the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought away captive out of the land of Israel a little maid and she waited on Naaman's wife and she said unto her mis- her mistress would God my lord were with the prophet that is in Samaria for he would recover him of his leprosy and one went in and told his lord saying thus and thus say, said the maid that is of the land of Israel and the king of Syria said go to go and I will send a letter unto the king of Israel. And he departed and took with him ten talents of silver and six thousand pieces of gold and ten changes of raiment. Verse 6. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel, saying, Now when this letter is come unto thee, behold, I have therewith, therewith sent Naaman my servant to thee, that thou mayest recover him of his leprosy. And it came to pass when the king of Israel had read the letter that he rent his clothes and said, My God, to kill and to make alive, that this man doth send unto me to recover a man of, of his leprosy. Wherefore consider, I pray you, and see how he seeketh a quarrel against me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's one this priest. <laughs> it's one priest that's in that. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Who did it? I did. You did? did? Yeah. Excellent. Mm-hmm. 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 Because after reading this, I heard the whole sermon all over again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Amen. I'll read the commentary for those verses. Well, verse 1 states, Though Naaman was regarded as a great military leader, we cannot identif- identify the specific deliverance that earned him this respect. Since scholars have long felt that the Hebrew word for Naaman's illness or leper refers to more conditions than just Hans's disease. The two through three it states, the kidnapping of a little Hebrew maid recalls God's description given through Amos of, his, of this border warfare they threshed Gilead with iron sledges, in reference to Amos 1-3. Yet the young Hebrew captive 
in the attitude of faith and resigned to the brutality of the age, mm. seem to have accepted her situation with a positive attitude and to have retained her personal faith in God. She was able to love her enemy and she wished that her Lord could experience God's miraculous healing. Mm -hmm. For five through six states, the willingness to seek healing from a foreign God does not necessarily indicate a high international opinion of the deity, but considering God's hand on the internal political affairs of Damascus, a measure of international standing existed, existed for Jehovah, the God of the Israelites. Therefore, seven it states the reaction of the king of Israel, particularly his fear that Damascus was seeking a pretext for war, showed that this was a time of weakness for Israel. Is there anything over there? Mm -hmm. Um, you read to to uh, seven, right? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, over here yes. it says it says uh, five one says leprosy was one of the most serious diseases of the time. Some forms were extremely contagious and in many cases incurable. In its worst forms, leprosy led to death. Many who had leprosy were forced out of the cities into quarantine camps, not only because they were contagious, but also because their disease made them ritually unclean and so unable to live and worship in the community. Because Naaman still had his post, he probably had a mild form of the, of the disease, or perhaps, or perhaps it was still in the early stages. In any case, his life would have been tragically shortened by his disease. 5.2 reads, Aram was Israel's neighbor to the northeast, but the two nations were rarely on friendly terms. Under David, Aram paid tribute to Israel. In Elijah's day, Aram was growing in power and frequently conducted raids on Israel, trying to frustrate the people and bring about political confusion. Israelite captives would often be taken back to Aram after successful raids. Naaman's servant girl was an Israelite kidnapped from her home and family. Ironically, Nam's only hope of being cured came from Israel. And three and four says the little girl's faith and Naaman's quest contrast with the stubbornness of Israel's king. A leader in mighty Aram sought the God of Israel. Israel's own king would not. We don't know the little girl's name or much about her, but her brief words to her mistress brought healing and faith in God for a powerful Aramean commander. God had placed her with them for a purpose, and she was faithful. Where has God put you? No matter how humble or small your position, God can use you to, to spread his good news. Look for opportunities to tell others what God can do. There's no telling who will hear you, who will hear your message. And 5-5, five, five, the name of Israel's king is not mentioned in the story. The events of 2 Kings 1-8 through 8 are mainly about Elijah's ministry and, and are not intended to be chronological. The king most likely Joram, but we cannot know for sure. And then it says, King ben of Aram sent Naram to the king of Israel, thinking the king would order Elijah to cure Nahum. He thought God's gift of healing could be bought. The king of Israel was upset because he knew he had no control over the situation. And he thought the Aram king was trying to find an excuse to fight. He was completely ignorant of God's power working through Elijah. He did not understand that God's power could transform even Israel's enemies. Yeah. Yeah, that's a Anyone wants to read further? Uh, I reference Leviticus, the 13th chapter, 100. One through, um, yeah. anyway, start at uh, Leviticus 13, that's one through 47, mm -hmm. and this will take you back to explain the leprosy, how it was uh, running back in those days, and what it was all about, and how they could get paid. Okay, it was a punishment, right? 
Um, it could have been Miriam a got it. but it was very contagious, you know. Um, well, that was in that was the punishment for uh, Miriam and Aaron because of what they did. The mm -hmm. people had to be quarantined, and that was years ago. Even in this country, there's countries now that leprosy is still there. Okay. Uh -huh. So it's very contagious, and that's why they separated people away from the others. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you read, what did I say? Le Leviticus Le 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 chapter Le Le 47. That will give you a very good overview of what Naaman is going through. Whether it's a little bit or a lot. Leprosy, um, the fingers would start uh, coming off and it was very, very contagious. Very contagious. Okay. Amen. That's all we have time for. Amen. Amen. We'll go around the room for final comments. Uh, Brother Thompson. Amen. Amen. Um, first thought comes to mind is that you know the Lord works in mysterious ways. <laughs> Amen. You never know, you know, yes, who is yes, going sir. to have an impact on and where it's going to happen at. Amen. Amen. Uh, Reverend Thompson. Um, I just like that Elijah can be bought here. He sent six thousand pieces of gold and remnant. He sent them clothes and all kinds of gifts. And he refused it in that and saw that it was a trick. It's like he's trying to quarrel against me. I just I just like that he stood <clears throat> on the fact that it's the gift from God and we can't charge people for God's gifts. Amen. Amen. Pastor. This reminds me salvation is free. Mm. A free gift. So we have to want to receive it. But we have to believe in the Lord and trust in the Lord with all our heart and all our understanding and all our wisdom and all our time and all our life. That's it. Amen. 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 Uh, with that, uh, we will go ahead and close out with prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for your word this morning. We thank you, Lord, for opening our eyes. We thank you, Lord, that your word is still worth standing on today just like it was back in their day lord we thank you lord that the message never changes lord lord we thank you for showing us these ways lord and we lord we ask that you help us to not only be readers of the word lord but doers of the word lord in jesus name we pray and believe amen 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 with that uh there's a few announcements we are uh, welcome to for you to join us uh, later on for our uh, Sunday service, uh, our, uh, <clears throat> our our worship, and our um, I see who who got who we got coming up on Sunday. Is that Reverend? Reverend Hutchins. Okay, Reverend Hutchins will be preaching, and uh, we just ask that you go and and uh, tune into that, and as well as share it with everyone else. Uh, join us back here on Tuesday for our prayer line. All of you know that prayer changes things, and we just like to stand in the gap for those who need us to stand in the gap, as well as praying for those who need healing or something in their life. Uh, as we know, praying, prayer changes things for us. We just hope that all the prayer warriors come out. And if you're not a prayer warrior, come out and be prayed over. Amen. Amen. And then again, uh, continue with this Bible study on Wednesday, next Wednesday at 6 o'clock. Again, Amen. thank you for joining us. We ask that you share this and see you back here again soon. Amen. Be blessed. Be blessed.